Hello everyone, it's Man Hodge coming back at you once again. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It's February and I wasn't gonna let this month get by without acknowledging Black History Month. So in today's video, I'm gonna count down my top five black sitcoms of all times. You may disagree, you may agree, but either way, let me know in the comments. <laughs> In the early days of television, blacks was rarely ever seen in any role outside of being a maid, a butler, or something of that nature. In 1951, Amos and Andy hit the screen. It was the first sitcom to feature black people. After 70 episodes, the show was finally taken off the air because of the negative stereotyping that they engaged in and the NAACP, along with others, you know, staged a boycott against the advertisers for the show. So he was eventually pulled. But the show, however, remained in syndication for 13 years afterwards. So somebody out there liked it. But I watched the show, well, I watched the episode today on YouTube just to see what it was all about. And it was trash. I mean, it was horrible. You know, it, it was really a waste of 22 minutes of my time, but I can't knock it if I never seen it. After that, no black sitcoms were shown on the air until the 1970s. The 1970s and 80s brought us a lot of great black sitcoms and it was good as a child seeing people who looked like me on television and not only seeing them on TV, but seeing them presented with dignity and respect. You know, a lot of people don't like some of the comedy and they want more serious things with a message. But you know, a lot of the sitcoms to me was mostly like feel good stories and things like that. They always had somewhat of a happy ending. So, you know, I never really had a problem with any of them. You know, if you disagree, let me know. What's the greatest black sitcom of all time? After wrestling with this list for the last few days, I finally was able to narrow it down to my top five. Here we go. Coming in at number five is Sanford and Son. Family Son may be one of the funniest shows ever in the history of television. And Fred and Lamont Daily Adventures were hilarious. But who made the show extra great for me was my boy Rollo. Man, Rollo got to be the coolest cat to ever grace the television screen. Red Fox was definitely a comedy genius. You know, he brought so much to that role. You know, it was just incredible. You know, the timing of his jokes, you know, his demeanor, the way he walked, the way he talked. You know, Fred was just the complete comedian. All the episodes, you know, are great and they just never get old. You can continue to watch them over and over. And that's why Sanford and Son is number five on my top five list. The number four spot goes to Martin. Martin was the only reason to turn to Fox Network back in their heyday when they first started. You know, a lot of people like Cops and The Simpsons, but I didn't care about none of that. All I wanted to see was Martin. And Martin roasting of Pam and Tommy was epic. Every episode was funny. Martin was cool. Gina had a big ass head. And Tommy, we never knew where he worked. Man, the show is just a classic. And of course, Cole was always stupid. I think Martin, if they had had a, a longer run and the show didn't end abruptly the way it did, it probably would have been higher up on my list. But you know, the friction between Tisha Campbell and Martin, you know, kind of just messed the whole show up. You know, I wish they had to work them, them things out and had a longer run together. But they are number four on my top five list. 
Coming in at number three is the Evans family and good times. Now, anybody who know me probably would have guessed that I would have put good times at number one because I watch it every day. I know every episode like the back of my hand. But you know, hey, it is what it is. They're coming in at number three. After James died on the show, it just didn't have the same, you know, chemistry. The show was still great now, don't get me wrong. But I think if James had had a, a longer run with the show, you know, his character was so powerful and so strong, it brought a lot to the table. And, you know, taking that father dynamic away from the show just never was the same. You know, Jimmy Walker, he stepped up in his role as becoming like the man of the house. And, you know, he was always funny and he made the show, you know, go on after that. But without James, it just was never the same. Good Times also tackled many problems that plagued the black community at that time. And a lot of things that still are relevant today. And that's what makes Good Times number three on my top five list. We're getting down to the top two. And I think now is when the controversy is really going to set in. Coming in at number two is The Cosby Show. The Cosby Show to me was the right show at the right time. The Cosby Show was a lot different from what I was used to seeing on television. It had a lot of great episodes. You know, episodes that stand out to me are the Gordon Gottrell shirt episode and the episode where Theo gets an earring. You know, Bill always, you know, brought a lot of no-nonsense comedy to the role. You know, the family dynamic was great. You know, they had a lot of guest appearances. And what I like about the show the most is that the show appealed to a vast audience. It showed a lot of diversity, but it always kept its blackness. You know, Bill would wear the HBCU sweaters and T-shirts and hats. And, you know, it really represented well in the community. And the show also gave us a different world. That's what make the Cosby Show number two on my top five list of black sitcoms. And the moment we've all been waiting for, the number one black sitcoms of all time, according to me, main heart one word, is The Jefferson. That's right, the number one spot goes to The Son of a Sharecropper. You know, we heard that story a million times from George on the show and the Jeffersons to me is the best sitcom of all times. George brought it every week. You know, he was funny. He was smart. He was intelligent. He was caring. He was giving. George was just the, the complete character. People always talk about how the Cosby Show Huxtables represented a nuclear family with successful parents who pass their values along to their children and push them to be successful, you know, being a first on television. But I disagree. I feel that the Jefferson, I feel that the Jefferson showed the same dynamic. They just had more of an edge and tackled social issues that the Cosby show went in touch with a 10 foot pole. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Until recently, the Jefferson's one of the longest running or was the longest running sitcom in television history. I think it was recently surpassed by the House of Pains not too long ago. The show was extremely funny and well written and it's hard to be on the air that long without jumping the shark like a lot of other shows did. So that's what make The Jeffersons my number one black sitcom of all time. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching. One word.